This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of SM Media Road to Cheltenham 2024. I'm Scott McPike, it's a pleasure as always to be your host and I'm delighted as always to be joined by from the Scottish Daily Mail, Callum McClurkin. Hi there, yeah, all good here. Um, last Saturday was a bit frustrating punting wise, I actually had probably the better record on here than actually on the day, kind of uh, second guessing myself out of a few things, but um, it can happen a competitive Saturday. Um, but yeah, inching closer now, no kind of... No kind of red crosses to deal with for another week, so that, that was a positive. No, nah, it's been fairly kind of open. We've obviously had a few stable tours that we'll maybe get my thoughts in kind of later on in the anti-post selections, but overall, it's getting closer, it's getting a lot more exciting, and it feels for, like, the sun, I'm looking outside, the sun's beginning to come out, it feels a bit more like Cheltenham season. Yeah, spring, spring's coming, isn't it, with big festivals, and Cheltenham's the first to... And then the first kind of flagship one to, to come round, and then you've got Aintree and Ian bunch of down after. So, yeah, there's plenty to look forward to. Absolutely. But we'll get into the, the fan questions. we get three questions this week. We'll start with the first one. It could be a historic festival for Willie Mullins. He's at 94 winners just now. But somebody is wanting to know, Callum, what will be his 100th winner? Interesting. Uh, I, I was kind of I was kind of going towards tail end of Wednesday, start of Thursday. Would it probably reach a century. Um, so maybe looking at the champion bumper, but he's got plenty there. So I think that might be an option. But I, I think it might be Fassel Vague in the Turners. Okay. That might be his hundred. That that might be the one. You know, the the horse that's probably disappointed in the most all season might be the one that delivers the hundredth if you reroute him there. And looking at the exchanges, it seems that they are coming round to that way of thinking, sending him over two and a half miles, which I think. It's shaping up to be a bit of a weaker race and it should suit him. Um, it probably depends on the well-being of Gaelic Warrior a little bit, whether he kind of reroutes some Markle horses into the tunnels. But um, I think if he does, it's eminently winnable because um, Jenny's destiny for all his solidity and improving through the ranks, being a grade one favourite um, is, is probably kind of not in his kind of makeup really. Um, and I think if a big class horse like Fasal Vega comes into the equation in that race, I think he's probably going to go off favourite ahead of Jerry's Disney. That doesn't mean it'll beat him, but yeah, I think you're looking at early Thursday, late Wednesday, as as he's as he's turn up, um, he's probably on track for nine or ten winners in, in an ordinary in an ordinary day. Cast your mind back to two years ago in twenty twenty two, where I believe they had ten winners. It's three winners going into the final day. No, sorry, four. Yeah. Aye, three yeah. winners going into the final day. I yeah. think he's a hundredth winner. Could be galloping the champs. It could be. It could be. I. I don't think he'll do too well the first day. Yeah, I think Wednesday will be decent, uh, and, and I think Thursday might be a bit of a bit of a struggle uh, at certain points. Um, at Friday, I think is the strongest by yeah. by a distance again. Um, so, so yeah, um, mirroring the race that he's actually plundered, Friday looks fairly fairly handy for him. Um, I think ten might be. A, he might not get to ten though. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, um, I think he he's in line for a, a good festival. I think it's usually the Friday comes to life. I've I've remember days. I remember a day where a festival where he didn't have a win until the Thursday, and then I think he had a fourth time on the Thursday, and I think a treble on the Friday. And that was all, do you know what I mean? So he's capable of... Remember the, remember the kind of state man, Vauban day. And, yeah, that as well, yeah. Uh, the nice guy won there, you know. He, he can kind of go like four or five timers Friday, you know, pretty you know, pretty normally. Um, you know, and then it was like days of like Ruby Tuesday and things like that. I mean, the, the, you, you, get it, you get it kind of all the time. There, there will be a day where he will completely and utterly dominate, where he probably will get, you know, at least four winners on the card. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what Willie Mullins does. Next question, we've got the handicap entries out. Callum, when in, in terms of looking for a handicap horse for the festival, how do you pick one? What do you look for when you're you're assessing the handicaps for the festival? 
for the festival. Um, I think I think you've got to be following a horse all season at, at this point, really. Um, first, you've got to kind of like the horse and like how it's campaigned and, and, and see what's for the race. Uh, the fact that entries and not weights means the weights are a little bit difficult to ascertain in terms of Irish. Um, so the likes of Billy Mullins, the likes of Irish, that kind of make the market, you don't know what kind of tax they're going to get. I kind of put them in the back burner a little bit. Yeah. Uh, at, at this point in the season, because um, you know, the British, they tend the majority of their wins tend to be handicap chases. Um, they've got a decent record in them, so we kind of look at trends, ages, try try and kind of build up a decent kind of profile of, of what you want in a horse at, at this point, um, and then kind of go into battle when you've got more kind of crown tactics, jockey booking, etc., and that that kind of gives you the green light to kind of kind of go and punt at these things. So, But yeah, there's, there's many factors. I don't think there's enough one specific way that you can do it. I mean, my handicap bent in this season has been pretty poor. No stands which suggest that I've been doing kind of something a little bit wrong and, and, and looking. I think I'm bringing the race generally well, but not kind of getting the kind of right result at the moment. And you do need a bit of luck as well. So, um, so yeah, but I like trains. I mean, like, you know, trains are always positive. Like Nicky Henderson does well with handicap hurdlers. Uh, you know, Dan Skelton normally maps one out you know quite well um it's the usual stuff the gordon elliott battalion um things like that so so yeah um, I, th I think trip trips probably one of the big aspects at this moment in time you know there's got so many different races that, that are options you've got to kind of think if you like this horse which what what race do you like to run it in what weight would you think is acceptable um tactically where would you want to be in it um, I th always think being at handy at Cheltenham is probably probably more suitable. Mm -hmm. And and look at the look at the nature of the race and the makeup of it. And if if it suits the horse that you like, then you've got the green light to green light to back it. But you just have to try and consider as many things as you feasibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Final question: uh, What have you been your top three performances of the jump season so far? I think we might have the same three. Um. Yeah. Uh, it's quite straightforward for me. Um, galloping to shop at Christmas. Yeah, that's one of mine. Is the obvious one. Um, then Bally Burn at Dublin Racing Festival. And then Hewick and the King Jog. Oh, right, okay. Probably a wee bit of sentimentality gets split in us there. I went for Sir Gino in the trials day. I thought it was superb. And I can see Hewick, but again, I think just to be about some sentimentality, I don't think anybody would say that Galloping to Shops and Bally Burn's performances weren't spectacular. It's been quite hard to find. Like, I was trying to kind of go through it because I had these three out straight away and I was thinking, is there anything that I've missed and anything I'm maybe underrating? But there's not been many. Like, Constitution Hill maybe at Christmas, but it fairly did what you expected. And I wouldn't say it was as flashy, but there's not been much. No, I mean, there's not been kind of low factor stuff. I mean, like, it's, I think it's not a level of opposition there. Um, I do think you've got to look at kind of top class grade ones to. You know, be a, be a wow factor for for me. I mean, it was a great story, and it's a King George. It's a very famous race, and and, and yeah, him him plugging away, winning a pretty decent race with all the three kind of big guns going to the second last, and then him kind of stealing it at the end was it was a it was a kind of memorable watch. Obviously helped by backing the right horse on the day, but um, yeah, I, th I think I think the big grade ones have in general kind of delivered. Um, the hurdlers are kind of just running to form, aren't they really? They're not doing much, and you're still trying to ascertain a pecking order out with Bally Burn, who seems to be in a different league at this moment, and, and Sergino, who seems to be a different league in, in the juvenile. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to pinpoint one at the moment. You'd probably get a different three after after the festival, the entry and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll move on to our recap. Callum, we'll start on Thursday at Con Mail. We had the uh, Mercedes Benz Novices Hurdle, which was won by Search for Glory, winning before and a half lengths. It was a bit of a lazy performance, actually. It was a bit sluggish. It was a bit, it was a really slow. They didn't go a, a great gallop at all. But he stayed on pretty well to win it, jumped well at the last in heavy ground. He's 20 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett. There's entries in the Baring Bingham. There's also an entry in the Martin Pipe, and he has an Irish rating of 140. What do you think of this? I think he needs to go to the Albert Bartlett because he needs a trip, and I think he appreciates deep ground as well. Um, 
It's a solid type. The yards seem to think that Croke Park is better, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think this is kind of festival graded form. He's kind of he's an old fashioned kind of lazy kind of front runner slogger. Um, he's probably going to be a bit better over the fence, over a fence, but um, one forty is probably about his limit. He could maybe go a bit better, but I, I don't think he's kind of I think he's going to reach kind of top class graded company. I'm like I can see him being kind of one of these. You know, dour Jiggenstown handicappers down the line that you know go to like you know Porterstowns and yeah. Irish Grand Nationals and and, and things like that. Fiestas, um, I, th- I think that's is probably his um, cup of tea. In Newcastle, we had a, a really good performance from Giovinco. One at Newcastle really didn't have a lot to beat. Uh, seems to be aiming towards the kind of Ultima. There's entries in there for the Brown Advisory and Turners. You're getting sixteen to one for the the Ultima, which Lucinda Russell was. Has won in the past couple of seasons. What do you think here? What, did we learn anything about Giovinco? No, I just learned that he's, he's, he's a decent horse. It's probably not quite top graded class, and therefore you're going to steer him maybe towards the ultimate. Um, one four six. It's probably probably a fair enough mark. Um, I, I just wonder if he's if the on material really yet. Um, I think he can, he looks good when things go right. You know these kind of small. Small run races are kind of his bag a little bit, isn't it? Um, you know, launching him into a handicap, I think it might be tough going for him. It might be a little bit of a counter, so I- I'm not sure he's won for Cheltenham. Friday and faking him. Secret investor for Paul Nichols won the Hunter's Chase into 20s for the race at Cheltenham. We're ridden by a, what looks to be a, an impressive uh, jockey in Natalie Parker. What do you think? I, I think this would have probably been a good one for the Nichols team after the, the kind of couple of weeks they've had. Where do you do you see him placing maybe in a, a hunter's chase? I think the hunter's chase is a bit of a minefield at the moment. Um, he was not going to win. He, I mean, there was there was one a horse in front that was five lengths clear, and you know, he's come up, picked the pieces. Um, former Denman Chase winner, his class. Cheltenham wasn't his bag when he was in his prime. Uh, it won't be here, and you know I think Paul Nichols was inclining to target Aintree with him anyway. Um, yeah, he's kind of a shanty flyer mode of he, he might place, but he, he he doesn't fully get the trip. Um, last year's one, two Premier Magic and it's on the line seem to me to be the two that you focus on again for the Hunter's Chase at this point. Gail so with Empire Steel kind of winning quite well for, for the Thompson team. I'd say he would need to be very, I think he might not even go to, to tell him he's entering the Ultimate, he's also entering the Grand National. What do you think? Enough? I don't think there's much a chance he goes to Cheltenham at all. No, it's not his bag again. Kelso, he's just, he's just an absolute Kelso specialist, isn't he? And he, he goes up there all the time. That The Premier Chase at Moor Battle Weekend is probably up his street. Um, he's going to be tricky for Sandy Thompson to place. Um, you know, he might go and like he dot things like that. There'll be decent northern prices for him here. Things like that. That's kind of just about his level. He's he's, he's reasonably well handicapped. You know, just anything just under the 150s. He's it's workable for him. Um Trip-wise, you, you wouldn't really get it either uh, beyond three miles. Um, so, yeah, he's a funny one to place, but he'll, he'll keep plundering these kind of races in his career. Saturday in Ascot, we had a, a few to talk about. We start with the Reynolds Town. It was won by Henry's friend. A gut punch as Kilbeg King was beaten by a head. Jumping just let him down. Apple away just didn't really do much again. And obviously, Brave Kingdom pulled up and... Hasn't entered in the the ultimate, which obviously be a, a low one for you. But in terms of Henry's friend, there is an entry in the National Hunt Chase. Overall, the race, how would you summarise us? Pretty, pretty poor form, to be honest. Every brief king of Apple away took each other on. Pretty long way out. Not, not didn't go on my gal. Apple we plugged on. I, I think she's just screaming for a trip. Um, I, I think she'd be an interest. She's got plethora of talent options. I think she'd be quite interested in National Hunt Chase. Um. I've made no bones about it. I, I would like to see her in a soft ground Scottish national. I think she would really enjoy that. She's a very slight mare, so you just kind of wonder how valuable she is and will we want to kind of go to the well all the time. But I, th- I think soft ground flat tracks seems to suit her. Again, a bit like Giovinco, there is a race there to be won with her, but I'm not convinced it's at the festival. Um, Brave Kingdom, I'm not bothered about because it was non runner bet, so I'm absolutely fine with that. He was either really well in and coming here or not. So it was either it was a boomer bust bet and with a non run no bet cover. I'm I'm not fussed so that's that that's that's money back. Um, he's had a history of problems and he seemed to have checked out the other drying ground again was a bit of a yeah. 
a bit of a negative factor for him given his given his, his French background. So he he might bounce back in a later date, but he's obviously kind of hard one to to keep completely sound. Um, the winner seems to be bypassing the National Hunt chase for for an entry target. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move into the handicap. It was won by Mott Hill. Beat uh, beat bad by a short head. I thought bad was going to was going to stay on. Just a tough one. I know you fancied bad. Nothing really overall bad. Might can I go like Coral Cup or something like that? But overall, again, I don't think we've seen many of these go to the go to the festival. No, it's a quick turnaround now for these and yeah, flat track ask. It's a, is is a different assignment, gentlemen. And it's 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 a lesser race. And, and and you know if you've done well, you're going up in the weights and you're going into higher, harder company uh, over a completely different undulating track. Um, yeah, in the second travel, though, over the winner, and even the winner dropped his whip so bad it didn't quite go through with it. He's kind of he's kind of done that before. I think I gave him another chance because the step up and trip's exactly what he wanted, and you know he didn't want to go past, so um, he's, he's placed and, and that was fine. He probably probably should have won. But, um, but yeah, I mean he could probably still keep placings, but he's he's not one to put to put any faith in at short prices anymore. Um, yeah, I can see. Maybe that kind of two and a half mile handicap at Aintree is more suitable for for that lot rather than anything at Chill. Uh, where the other handicap was won by three under through five, the Swinley handicap chase. Where Paul Nichols, a really good hour for Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden, it started with us. Uh, three under through five made a lot of mistakes. I mean, you watch the race back. I think he jumped, uh, made a mistake at nearly every fence, but managed to to win the win the race. Idle towards the finish. I thought Rapper was coming late. I, th- I think three under through five, probably the. I don't think he's entered for chairman. I think the plan is going to the Grand National. And he wouldn't be without a chance. Do you imagine the trip would kind of play into his strengths a wee bit? Yeah, he'd get in, he'd get the trip. Um, his jumping would be a bit of a concern. He is kind of handicapped to the hilt, isn't he? You know, he's kind of a. He's punished kind of for his own consistency. Um, he's got a kind of high head carriage. He doesn't win very often. Um, He's a bit big, but he, he, he wouldn't be for me at, at a Grand National anyway. Um, I, I don't think... He's, he's had his day there. He jumped... He, he can make mistakes, but I mean, Harry Cobham came at it and he was, and he was prominent and, and, and got his reward. He, he does have he does have a bit of class about him uh, on, on his day, so, so he's, he's, a, he's a player in, in a Grand National because of the way the weights and race is structured. That means, you know, his weight's actually going to be pretty reasonable, even though his mark probably... Probably isn't in the face of it, but um, he is quite exposed, though. I would, I would say. Yeah, the Ascot Chase was won by Pack Dory. Terrific ride from Harry Cobden, just bowled out from the front, and Lahome Press just couldn't really go with him. It was outpaced. A hoist and yard, I didn't think, kind of showed himself in any justice. A lot of credits going on to the ride for, for Harry Cobden, and rightly so, but in terms of this, it was probably a real a disappointment from Lahome Press. I just didn't really just the the trip I thought was very very was went against him. I, I don't know what to make of it. I thought Lahom Press jumped a lot to his left. I didn't think going right handed was going to suit anyway. And I just thought the winner, just the the best the best horse for that type of race, just won the race and just bowled out. Horses for courses. I I I, th- I just think that the Lone Press is just an obvious float up for the Gold Cup. Um, he's. He jumped badly right at Kempton, but he fell. And, and credit to him, he, he, he kept pitching away. But um, you know, that was that's over three miles in heavy ground that day, and this is two mile five over drying ground. And it, he's to jump well. Charlie Deutsch hasn't been hard on him when his chance had gone. You know, picked all his, the horse that had the position, has more tactical speed, and he's and he's utilised it. Um, I just think after such a long layoff at Lingfield, we're kind of weary of him maybe bouncing at Cheltenham rather than here. And he was he was eight to thirteen, and he was he was he was quickly quickly kind of eased out to just a shade on odds on favourite. Um, he ran as market expected. This would be unsuitable and float up, and 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 people cottoned on that pushing them out to twenty to one in a place for the Gold Cup was was too much of an overreaction because you know that was picked Dory's Cup final. It certainly wasn't the home prices. No. Um, a hoy senor, I mean, he keeps fooling people. I mean, I, I don't really know what's the campaign here or what's the end game with this. Um, you've learnt nothing. Um, it's not prominent enough. I mean, he'd be the one that you'd expect. To, maybe he's dropping back in trips, so he's, he's got to be run forwardly. Um, all his best runs have been, you know, when he's been, you know, out in a rhythm up front. Um, 
I didn't quite get why you'd you know have them that far back in a three runner race and they're just going you know, to entry because he did he did do well. His best form has probably been at entry, and they're just kind of thinking, right, let's go for the Betway Bowl again and just try it. And because it probably a better year would have won last year, but I, I, as I say, I just don't get what they're doing with him. Well, he took he took Cheltenham in before entry. I mean, he obviously can take his races quite well. That's that's the one thing we know about him. So I wouldn't see why you wouldn't go Cheltenham again. Um, if I was Lucinda Russell, um, you know, Derek Fox gets it right in Corrick Rambler. He repeatedly gets it wrong in a Hoy Senor. Run them both in a Gold Cup. Get a Hoy Senor bowling up front with Steve McQueen on it or Brian Hughes and make it a test and that'll help Corrick Rambler. Yeah. And it'll help it'll help both of them. I'd run them both in the Gold Cup and we have a view that a Hoy Senor might have an easier opportunity to entry. Um, and Corrick Rambler's going to entry. So, I mean, you can train them both for the Gold Cup in the Grand National, something like that. I mean, obviously, Hoy Senor's not in it, but you know, get a Hoy Senor to bet we bowl or something like that. But I just just don't see, you know, why he would take that in and, and not really learn anything from that, uh, from him. You didn't really kind of know where, he, where, he's, where his well-being or, or form was after that. And it's kind of been like that all season with him a little bit, maybe sulked it slightly. We do know he's kind of quirky, but yeah. And as for the winner, you know, it's the same kind of conversation again where we might have a run at the King George with him. Actually, we won't. He'll just keep running in Silvianico Conti and Betfair Chases till the end of his days, I think. Right, let's move into Haydock. We've got a few to mention. We'll start. There was a juvenile hurdle. It was won by Salve. A very nice performance. Really, really keen. 16 for the triumph. I don't think he's going to beat Sergino, but he could be an HP player. Ground dependent. He'll only go if it's soft or heavy. Yeah. Um, and even then, he'll have a bit to find. Right, uh, Rendlesham Hurdle was won by Botox Haas. This went exactly the opposite of what I thought it would. I thought Butch was was absolutely nailed on here, and Botox Haas just really took it on. And Butch jumped a lot to his right. Botox Haas, we know what his capabilities are. He might go for a Stairs Hurdle, 33 to 1. He's entered in the, the National Spirit at Fontwell on Sunday, which probably could go as well. I think he's won that in the past. That was, it was a, It's a terrible bit of Stairs for him, like, to be honest. Like, if this is a Stairs trial, then. Oh dear. Solid one for the grade wins. Um, Butch did a bit too much too soon up front. You are looking for this kind of unexposed kind of horse that would enjoy it and liked it. And he's kind of, he's run a bit below himself. It was still a bit disappointing. The market was strong for him. And he, he hasn't delivered. Um, he's won twice at Cheltenham Botox has, but the plan is to skip it. Um, they're skipping that. You know, they'll go to Fontwell and they will probably run in the entry equivalent instead because they think that he prefers a flatter track. Uh, the Grand National Trial was won by the Irish Raider. Gavin Cromwell's yeah man won the race. I thought I, very, very much uh, the horse with the kind of best in weight. Rate at 133. I thought he was well in. 92. I, Highland Hunter gave me a good account in fourth. There was a, there was a, some decent kind of eye catchers here. Gavin Cromwell seems to have a few kind of going under the radar this year, and this could be one of them. He's plundering these kind of prizes he did in the in the in the grade two trial afterwards as well in the hurdle race. Um, he, he's he's you know they put the premier money up this season. You know Gavin Cromwell's targeting it really well. You know the Irish trainers. You know if they can't quite compete the festival with some of these horses, that they can go and get alternate prizes. Um, yeah, and this this guy you know, off one forty in, in an Irish national seems to be. Seems to be a reasonable way to go. Um, and I'm annoyed because I've backed him at Ascot and he's, he's, he was wanting that trip. I wasn't convinced that he was wanting that sort of depth of ground. And you know, when I gave him a positive mention, he was an each way price. And then you know, afterwards, he was 92 favourite. I kind of left him alone and, and, and backed, backed Famous Bridge instead, who was going really well until yeah. falling from nowhere as well. They were the two that were travelling well within themselves. Um, and you've got the Warwick. Classic chase winner in second, so yeah, it's it's solid, solid stairs form, I would say. Um, well, if I think the Grand National will hold these, it won't because of the way the weights are structured. You know, they can't get in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pertemps qualifier, a nice horse won that in the form of a Cuthbert Dibble. Love that name. I know Johnny Deneens get well known for that, but I think again, Pertemps Pertemps won it. Qualify ones don't have a great record in the Pertemps. You'd imagine Finn Lambert will keep the ride and get the, maybe five pounds back, and you might you might get like a five six pound raise for this. Nice performance, I think the Pertemps looks a mess. Yeah, there's there's a lot that are there that aren't qualified. There's a there's a there's a notable Irish race I think this weekend, 
that's one that they've thrown in there late in the day. That I mean, the likes of Maxim could qualify. It's like against Town Horse getting a lot of support in the, the exchanges. I saw. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, but, but again, these horses need to qualify. People yeah. have been stung already in this, um, you know, by backing horses that haven't qualified or, or yeah. qualifying as a plan. And I would too. Well, that, that's why you think it's a mess, probably because you yeah. uh, made a mess of it. Both uh, Gordon Elliott horses. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I don't think this is now on the Irish radar that much anymore, uh, particularly big trainers, because I need to qualify, you need top four in, and then you get whacked by attacks, and then. You have to leave him alone really for the rest of the season. I mean, it doesn't hold the appeal of a plot that it that it usually does. Um, as for Cuthbert Dibble, well, he's next on the list, isn't he? He's he's reasonable. I, I don't think what one four three in, in in the final. I don't think so. any gimme. He wouldn't be he wouldn't be anywhere near the top of my list. I quite like the Henderson Battalion in the race. But that's yeah. only angle that I have looked at. Yeah. Uh, now is the hour for Gavin Cromwell. It was a good day for Gavin Cromwell at the uh, Haydock. Won the, the grade two. Hasn't entered at Cheltenham, but you'd imagine that this horse could be somewhere that can I go? 17 lengths he won this. Can I imagine he could be one for maybe nine? It could be a decent chaser. This is the kind of race that should sink hearts of British racing fans because yeah. you're thinking like, oh, and there's some nice types here with Bowen's part and Mount Fuji part, you know, some really nice types. They've been absolutely whacked by. You know, a horse that you know wouldn't be in anybody's graded radar o- over here in Ireland. You know, um, it's it, by seventeen lengths. It's a bit of a despairing sight, and it didn't even go reasonably well back. To, I mean, he's come back from forming decent bits of form um, earlier on in the season, um, and yeah, he, he seems to be one. He might roll the dice with punches down later on in, in Grade Company if you won a race like that. Um, there's plenty, there's plenty at home for for these horses. So, um, so yeah, I'd imagine they'd stick with that. Quite a, f- a few decent kind of British reputations in behind were severely dented. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a quick word in the race at Wincanton. The Kingwell was won by Neiman Lyon, mm-hmm. sixty six to one for the champion hurdle. Again, just I thought I was really disappointed in Colonel Mustard, although. Held up, I thought they should have been ridden a lot more closer. Like Goshen, if you're back in Goshen at this stage, you should be done. Rubo, I know the ground would have been against him, but it was it wasn't a good look again. No, I mean this is kind of race, but I mean again, this was the kind of thing that we correctly spotted last week about about you know Rubo being short because you know he's done this and that, but you know, this was unsuitable. Yeah. You know he does not act in soft ground, and he had this massive weight weight turnaround weight. We kind of muscle to deal with from here, and and you know he's ran well. He's he's kind of done. You know his win record says it all. Really, you know he keeps running with credit and, and bumping into, you know, into something that's that's too good for him. And I mean, line and, and, and fair credit to Kerry Lee. You know they've they've mapped this horse out well all season. I was thinking he's probably becoming a little bit more of a two and a half miler now, um, but you know he's, he's he's good enough to keep improving through the handicap ranks, and you know. Your horses like him, Iberico Lord, are probably significantly better than these kind of grade two types that are running in Kingwell hurdles and, and, and things like that and international hurdles. Um, and the, I think the top end handicappers are better than your grade two hurdles and that's how warped the kind of system is. Yeah, no, absolutely. We'll move on to Gorham with a few decent horses to talk about. We'll start with Landry Lady, uh, beat What's Up Darling. I thought that was a nice performance, actually. Kind of race wide, I think the Gordon Elliott horse isn't that good, to be honest, but nine, nine and a half lengths, uh, they won this. She's going to go for the, the Mayor's Hurdle, apparently, 20 to one in there. The way that race is cutting up, she might hit the frame each way. Henry de Bromhead's horses are coming into some right good form at this point. Um, She's another one. I don't think she's quite grade one material, though. Um, she could run a race, but you know, that was a good performance. I think the horse that she's beat of Gordon Elliott is, isn't high up in their pecking order too much either. So the race kind of fell in her lap a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah she's, she's, a, she's a solid tight. 20s rolling the dice, maybe, but there should be classical ones above her in the market. Uh, St. Sam won the, the Red Mills Chase. It was, it was a decent performance, obviously, come back from a long break. It hasn't run since September where he fell. I'm not funny, Callum. I think you and I in a costume could beat Rabia the tail in left-handed. Well, I think we could. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Gordon like, doesn't mind kind of campaigning, even though they're going completely the wrong way around. Um, 
it was, a, it was an interesting bit of placing of going for it. Um, you wouldn't rule her out. Now. You wouldn't rule her out running well. The males chase and bouncing back. At least males just seem to tend to do that. Um, seeing Sam come back long playoff, um, he seems to be the next kind of easy game type figure where he's going to plunder these kind of grade twos, grade threes, and and and, and things like that, isn't he? Um, soft ground ones. Um, so yeah, he he he's, he seems to be a good type for that. He's, he's definitely he's probably quite fragile, and he, he probably needs it quite quite soft. But um, his his win record actually decent when when on song. Yeah, absolutely. A final uh, horse to mention at uh, Gorham was Saint Felician. Won at six to five, beat the likes of Spanish Harlem, Amy Desi, who jumped really really poorly. Saint Felician is twelve to one in places for the plate and the Grand Annual. <laughs> Do you think he's, think he's that type of holiday? He could be. I mean, imagine he'll get a high high rating. Do you think he's good enough to do that? One four seven or something like that. One fifty. Um, he was a big plunge one year in the Coral Cup, and That's he right, completely yeah. didn't handle it. And I just that was a really that. soft he, ground year, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it wasn't ground related. He just completely didn't handle it at all. He was he was only a five year old, and he he just balked at it. Um, Got like a few of those where I would be a bit worried about travelling over. I think the fifties another one. Um, Mighty Potter was. I think they, they just some of them get a bit jiggy and, and don't quite handle it. And I, I think he might be one. I would respect him on form. You know, he's he's got enough back class, but just worried if Cheltenham's going to be his bag. I'm not so sure it would be. Uh, one horse that isn't going to Cheltenham, but I thought this was a, a fairly decent performance with Mister Policeman. One by six lengths, finally off the mark over fences. You thought at the first fence he might not last, but I thought he jumped pretty well from there on in. And you'd imagine this might be the kind of time he might be one that could go maybe to a, a race at maybe Fairy House or something. I, I'm surprised they haven't put him in anything at Cheltenham. But he's not good enough for the Cheltenham class, mm. in my opinion. He's a two and a half mile handicap chaser all day long. And, you know, there is ample target. And, and I think he might be a bit better right handed as well. I, I mean, I think, you know, there's good prizes at that trip to the end of the season at Fairy House in Punchestown, and you know he's he's definitely good enough to kind of go and plunder one of them. He's a bit backward. He's, he's definitely not Gaelic Warrior, but he, he is backward in the sense of what Gaelic Warrior was at the start of his career. Um, I don't think he's going to fulfil anywhere near that kind of top class potential, but you can see why maybe handicapping will instantly be his game a little bit, and then he'll gradually keep getting confidence, and he might he might be worth tossing in graded company maybe maybe next season in the kind of a softer race. Hey, Callum, we have been desperate to get your thoughts on this. Just when we thought the Willie Mullins bingo of novice huddlers couldn't get any more crazy, step forward Tully Hill, who put in a very good performance and is now 4-1 to one in places for the Supreme. Callum, my head was baffled getting into this rate, getting into to this, kind of talking about Willie Mullins, where he's going to send what, and this is just throwing a complete spanner on that works. But first of all, far better than what he's shown so far this season. Yeah, he's gone from a horse that looked completely unschooled to maybe becoming more the finish article. Um, let's make no bones about it, though, and that this was a gift of, of a race for him. You know, the, the others in behind haven't been put in the race at all to the freebie from start to finish. It's a soft listed race. He's jumped well. His attitude is a lot better. Um, and he's he's pulled away the line quite nicely. But he's had a token entry in the Supreme as an afterthought because he's, he's obviously not fulfilled the height of potential. And you thought his maiden was over two miles six, yeah. which completely doesn't apply a scream supreme to, to anybody, um, and, and 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 it's just three weeks before Taylor, which would be a very unwilling Mullins like prep and a, and a quick turnaround. Then, like like we've seen with Mystical Power, like we've seen with Jericho de Repri, I cannot believe that the, these horses have been backed into four to one after after their efforts. Now the Mystical Power's kind of sixes now. Jericho de Repri is out to eights. Tully Hill will go out as well. Um, if Ballyburn doesn't turn up here, I think you're going to get a woeful Supreme Novices huddle and you're going to get six to one in the field. Yeah, and I think we're more and more going towards that type of thing because, right, you're a Slade Steelbacker, right? So I would imagine you're wanting Ballyburn to go Supreme, right? I would imagine yeah. for that book. Do you think if Ballyburn... And for the sport. And for the sport, right. But if Ballyburn goes barring Bingham, which seems more and more likely than it did maybe even last week, 
would you want Slade Steele to go supreme? Even though you've got the Baring Bingham book, if you're just a, just looking at the the race from a, a Henry de Bromhead perspective, are you better off going two miles and a a trip where you've been well beaten, or going to a trip where you're far better suited and you might be able to reverse the form of Ballybug? It's a, I just think there's so many ways of looking at this that I don't think we're going to get an answer until the Sunday. To be honest, I'm not, not going to get an answer to any of these two races until you know where Ballyburn runs because. Horses will run a mile from him. If you're doubly entered, you're not taking him on. That that, that seems to be general. I mean, Henry de Bromhead has said that. He said that on second to to, to Ballyburn in the day. He said, look, we'll we'll take we'll basically go where he he doesn't, regardless. Um, now, personally, betting wise, I'm not bothered. I did take the no 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 bet because I think Slade Steel is clearly going to be a better two and a half miler than two miler anyway. But I can understand why they want to kind of dodge Ballyburn if, if if they want, particularly if 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 you can poke holes at the at the, at the Supreme. And I wouldn't really entertain Slade Steel in the Supreme, but he might be more kind of rounded and in better form on the book than than some of these who may, might be kind of hype horses. And Firefox get to come back from a disappointing effort. Um, you know, mystical power. He's only got one bit of graded form on the book, and his jump was a bit sketchy. And, you know, he was initially kind of year marked as a two and a half mile, wasn't he? And then he got rerouted. Um, and Tully Hills only kind of won a listed race like that. And Jericho de Rep and he's rated one three two, which wouldn't get you in any handicap at Cheltenham. Um, and, and the rest are kind of like telling names one three five, <laughs> things like that. And you, you really are scratching at the surface if Ballyburn doesn't go here. Like, I, I just think it was the same when Perry Pass. I think championship championship two miles should be running two mile race. The last four barring Bingham winners, they could have all ran well in the Supreme. Yeah. It's the first race of the meeting, you know. If there's no exciting horse there, it starts it starts at a little bit of a dampener for, for, for me. Yeah, yeah, it might be an interesting kind of little little betting heat, but you know, I th- if you'd see mystical power going off default seventy two favourite and probably probably win. Um it, it's it's pretty it's pretty uninspiring. Um there was a positive move this morning in the exchanges. Back towards Supreme for um, Ballyburn. It's what Willie Mullins wants to do. I mean, the top four in the market, he's got three of them in each novice hurdle race. Um, so it, it's all about one because he's head and shoulders above the rest. Uh, he could probably run the Supreme and then win the Barry Bingham the day after if, if he wanted to. Um, I think he's probably that. He's probably that superior, but. So when one trainer has that concentration of power, it's going to have this massive concentration effect on the rest of them. Where this guy, where this guy will go, because the appeal of Tully Hill is he's just going to run in the Supreme. I, I think that's the appeal of him. Well, mm-hmm. Mystical power, you don't know. He could go two and a half. Do you think he could then, go? Would you would you be confident? Right, let's say Ballyburn goes Supreme. Would you be confident in putting your hat? If you're Willie Mullins at Mystical Power, I know he's got Al Atlantic could read and Tommy wrong. That probably will go Barring Bingham as well. But is he, and you get the confidence that Mystical Power is the balance, the, the two and a half miler? Has he shown that? No, I, I don't think, I don't think he'll run there either. I, I I actually think he'll run all three in the Supreme. I, I do think he will run Ballyburn in the Supreme. I do think, and and I, th- I think I think the, the key factor for me in this is Paul Townend. Yeah. Be- because I, I think Paul Townend will want to ride Ballyburn in the Supreme because he's had a two mile Thing, but if I just keep it simple from the front the first day, I'll win this. And I, I think El Atlantique comes into the equation, the two and a half miler, because if you look at the laws on these thing, I think he knows exactly what to do in him to get the best out of him and have a, just a bit more patient ride and wait. So I think he's got a bit of a vested interest there in, in what two he wants to ride in the Supreme and Barring Bingham. And I definitely think it's those two. Tully Hill's through a spanner box because he's looked pretty good in there, but it's late in the day and the turnaround like that. He's been an afterthought, and you know he's been very backward beforehand. Will he, will he handle the preliminaries as well as maybe a more rounded Ballyburn as well? Mystical Pills, Mark Walsh's ride. So I mean, so I I think from that factor, I, I think the jockey might the jockey might have more kind of more seen this than usual. Um, that's that's the only way that I could probably probably attack it, and you know. It, when people say, oh, is he going to run all three in the Supreme? He ran all three in the Bearing Bingham, one, one, two, three last year. 
they were all pretty best novice levels. He had Vassal Vega in mind for that two miler, and nothing was going to change his mind there. Um, and, and he's still kind of persisting with him for two miles. So, so I, I don't think Willie Mullins is as dogmatic trip wise as, as any of these. Uh, he still ran four in last year's Supreme. I mean, you've got that. He's got so many. He's got about twelve entries in the Supreme. That's 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 a, that's a point, isn't it? I mean, I mean, he's he, and he's got. He's also got like um, Predators Gold as well, and and Green Tommy Wrong in, in the Baron Bingham. So it's not as if it's not as if he's without a chance in it. He, he, yeah, he might not have the favourite because Slay Steel might be the favourite being in Bingham, but he's not. He's not a lost cause. Do, he's, do he's, you think he's it's a case though? The next five in behind. Do you think it's a case though that whatever race Ballybum doesn't go for is automatically like a poor race? Because I would say like if the Supreme, I get the point. I don't. I don't have any. I think you can pick holes in everything in that. The, the Supreme if he doesn't go but Barring Bingham I think Slade Steel I'd be all over Slade Steel with Barry if Barry Bung went Supreme so definitely I just think it's more because I, that that, piece, that that's that singular piece of form is so much better than anything else yeah and and I think there's a bit more depth in the two and a half mile division than there is in the two mile division anyway out with Willie Mullins you know if you've got the laws on ace form reading Tommy Rome you know, like Gidley Park comes into the equation. There's certain horses of that that, that might go there, and that a lot. I think a lot more of them are inclined to take the chance in that. So you've actually got a decent race out with Ballyburn there. I think if you take him out of Supreme, I think as a curtain raiser, I, I think it falls falls apart. And there yeah, was interesting years where the market was, but you knew Shishkin had world the potential. You knew Abercadabra was going to be a good horse. You knew Champion House was going to be a good horse with that lot. I wouldn't be confident. I, mean, I, I think some of them are in a normal year. In a normal year, some of them would be like 40, 50 one shots. Yeah. No, it, I, it's, it, is, it is ridiculously, ridiculously weak. Yeah. No, I think that's fair enough. And I think it's probably something we could spend a full podcast on. But I think by the, the next time we come on a show, I think we'll probably have more of an answer. I think we'll see a couple of preview nights that will just give us some wee we nuggets of information similar to last year. But final race was on Wednesday. It was a Covavega Mears hurdle. We thought we would see Gala Marceau mm. showcase her performance, but she ran terribly. And Hispanic Moon won the race for the De Bromhead team. Uh, I don't know if they're uh, 16 to 1 for the Mears hurdle. Gala Marceau, though, let's start with her. Very, very disappointing effort. Yeah, uh, she was a bit ring rusty at Doncaster and expected to improve for it. And she took a backward step instead. Um, well, Mullen said he had a heavy blow afterwards and, and it probably isn't a true running, but you would have, you would have maybe forgiven that earlier on in the season, uh, three weeks out of Cheltenham. That's a big that's a big no no. You've got to doubt if she'll even make it after after an effort like that. Um, but it was it was over by the home straight. She just simply simply never looked like picking up and jumping was a little bit skates as well. She was very, very off well. She was very, very keen. And she hasn't got that keenness out of her at all, have they? Um I think that maybe that was the plan of oh, we'll have a wee float up here, knock off the freshness of her and give her every chance to set over the longer trip there. But uh, at the weight she was wrong and you know, she bumped into a you know, mid thirties horse that was still still on the upgrade and while it, it might take a bit of a leap in, in the mind to win a mayor's hurdle, um she's not she's not totally out of it on fire, so Hispanic. I mean I think she's she needs it soft. Um, she's very uncomplicated in the, in the way she goes about things, and it's beaten beaten C. Levy, who is isn't a bad kind of mid one thirties mare herself, you know, quite quite easily there. Um, but yeah, all about Gallimore. So I mean, people were nibbling away, weren't they? Eights before this race, going she'll win this, she'll she'll now be in line with National Diamond to take on Lossy, and it's going it's going completely the other way. There was a brilliant piece of uh, research done by a friend of the show, Sean Dunn, on Lossy Mm -hmm. Mouth and the Mayor's Hurdle, where I didn't even think of this. Mayor's Hurdle, favourites in the Mayor's Hurdle do not have a good record in recognition years. Two of the last ten are Honeysuckle and Vroom Vroom Mag one. But also you've got the the four turn and five thing with Lossy Mouth. It's four to seven. Four to seven's there. Is that really good considering you've got that I didn't even think about the favourites record, but also if you get the, the four turn and five, four to seven doesn't look appealing to me, even though it, she could be frightening. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit like that in the triumph in a way where where the, the trip and how she how she can settle. Um, I I think she's probably going to win. I mean, I, I don't think four to seven, it's it's pretty prohibitive, but 
the one horse everyone was kind of latching on to kind of formulate a case to beat her has significantly blotted her copybook, and that that's that can only be a plus for for Lossie. I mean, it's just a trip, and, and the way she settles, it might might be a nagging doubt, and if something is coming back to form with a bit more experience, might might do her in because it is sure. it has been a bit of a graveyard for favourites. Yeah, we'll maybe talk about that a bit more later on, but we'll move into our preview for the weekend. Callum, we head to Kempton this weekend for a meeting that I really enjoy and we'll start with a race that I probably used to despise, but now I think this could be quite decent. Uh, the Adonis Juvenile Hurdle, it seems some, some horses have been absolutely wolfed in the market. I don't think we'll see that this year. Calif de Belli uh, is even money favourite. You would imagine that the Nichols team and the they will aim to entry with this horse if he bolts up and just going by his two runs very much could. Yes, and by the Ferguson crew, and so I mean, yeah, he's got a Mon Morales profile, isn't it? Um, in that way, he's got a five pound penalty carry here. He's he's one round Kempton already, course of the distance. Deep ground won't be a problem to him as well. Um, Gibby Five's obviously an interesting rival against him. You know, he's he keeps winning quite quite significantly as well and, and convincingly. So maybe he's a bit big seventy two against even money, but they do they do think he. I think a good deal of this, and Paul Nichols is already at least some decent juveniles like Zilliari. Yeah. So yeah, so um, so it, they merit complete respect, and yeah, I think Aintree is going to be down the line for for Lee's rather than Jill. We've got Pendle Novices Chase. Oh, we're going to see Nickel back here, but he hasn't been declared as far as I'm aware, and it leaves it quite open actually. You've got Boyer Rod for the Lacey mm-hmm. team, La Patron, Pembroke, you've Tamuris in there, Arc White, fairly open race. Where do you stand here? I quite like Tamuris. Yeah, I think he's just getting the hang 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 of things now a little bit. Um, he was definitely probably he was the best hurdler out of these. Um, and, and, and he's pomp. He's one at the distance. These are the kind of races Paul Nichols likes to kind of plunder. And I think if 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 any of them is going to take a significant step forward, it might be him. Um, Art likes won the last three. Um, improving, getting a bit of weight. I think they're the two that I would be I've been inclined to focus on. Yeah, I kind of think Tamuris is uh, is where I'm going as well. Obviously, a great a great one winner over hurdles. It's just no happen for him over fences. But you think this might be the sort of race that might suit him well, as you say. Nichols got a good record in this. I kind of think Tamuris as well. I've got a strong fancy in the three o'clock. I think lump sum for Sam Thomas could be very good. And I think we might if if lump sum was to to really impress here and win. I think we might see Jericho Derepine get a wee bit of a a boost in the the supreme market. Obviously. Ran him close in the Rossington at Haydock a couple of weeks ago. I think that I think I'd probably say lump sum is probably my strongest fancy of the, the day here. Yeah, he certainly needs a boost in the market, doesn't he? To, yeah, somebody needs a, a bit of support with the form boost. Um, yeah, he's he's definitely the one to be. Uh, whether we in at seventy four, I'm not sure. I think the ground being soft is a big plus for him. Though I, I quite like the profile was a fiercely proud and secret squirrel, but I, I do wonder. If they were asking for a bit of better ground, um, interesting to see how Pinjari runs. Mm-hmm. He won the Supreme Trial well up at Mossover. Um, he's up ten pound for that. Um, I think these kind of races, the Scottish Champion Hurdle, I think things like that are probably going to be his bag. And Alan King's horses hit a bit of form. Helen Ween might be overpriced as well, particularly if it if it keeps raining at Kent because he quite likes it soft. So uh, it's it's a funny one. It's one that I'm able to leave alone because the two that I quite liked, I think, are being adversely adversely hit by the ground conditions. Um, and and there are other ones to consider there apart from apart from the favourite. He's an obvious starting point, and I think a lot of people would like to see him win because it, it would give kind of Jericho Jericho Derepi a little bit of a, a little bit of a form boost going at the Supreme, which is much the need. Uh, next race, the Coral Trophy at three thirty seven. <laughs> I quite like Killer Kane for the Tizzar team as an each way player here. I think he's he's had a wind off. He was third last time out, where I just think he, he didn't really settle very very well. One at the track, I think ground will be fine. I think at twelve to one, he's a good each way player here. But where are you kind of siding with the, the Coral Trophy? Yeah, uh, I've been burnt by Killer Kane quite often. He always finishes third or fifth for some reason. You know. He, he... His wind ops and, and things like that. I think think this grade is, is just a li- little bit beyond him. Um, I thought unanswered play- players was a bit big for Freddie Gorn. Chris Gorn, I mean, 
And that Ascot race, well, I think Yeaman was running really well as well. He he was running on quite convincing as well. Didn't fire at Kempton the day after Boxing Day. Um, that wasn't his that wasn't his true form. The yard were kind of in trouble there. He's had a wind up subsequently, and the yard in a much better form. Um, whether he wants it this soft is is a bit debatable. But the thirty threes, he's definitely overpriced as as a ones that near the top of the market. Elgadoto's remarkably consistent. He just kind of soft ground will play his strengths. You just kind of wonder he doesn't win often enough. Uh, he can be a bit quirky. And, you know, is the plate going to be really his kind of you know main objective in the spring? Uh, the one at the top of the market, like most, is definitely about to greatness. Ben Pauling's the other going terrifically well. Yeah. Um, owned by Harry Renap, who likes to kind of map one out at these kind of good handicaps, um, shake him up, Harry, things like that, horses like that. He's an eight year old, 10 stone nine, lovely weight, um, improving. Sean at Cheltenham was, was reasonable enough. I don't think he quite handled the track, but uh, he's down two pounds for that. And I think this kind of flatter track, maybe a bit longer in distance, I think that'll suit him nicely. I, I think he's a, I think he's a decent play around the, the eight to one bracket. Interesting. We'll move into Newcastle. We've got the Eider handicap chase. Always a, a very, very dour test of stamina. Uh, you've got uh, Angus Crag for Brian Ellison at seven to two. Fenland Tiger, Gold Clermont, Tommy Bow, the Galloping Bear. There's some decent horses in here. Where do you stand? I'm kind of struggling to to find one, but I'm I'm hoping you might change my mind. Fenland Tiger for me. Um, it's one of the last two quite nicely. He likes Newcastle. Um, test of stamina. It's, it's right up his street, and it would be a big, it would be a big kind of win for the, the old gold uh, syndicate team, um, going Apple away, things like that. So, so yeah, I, I think, I think again around that kind of eight to one bracket, I think he's got a really good chance. Angles Crags going up in grade, but he was very impressive at Musselburgh last weekend in a, a decent race where he could absolutely blew them apart. Really, Brian Elson would target this race fairly successfully, I would think. So I respect him at the top of the market, but uh, I think Fenham Tigers are decent each way alternative at the, the bottom of the weights. Very good. So we'll move into our final part of the show. We'll move into our anti-post selections. <laughs> Callum, I spent a bit of time during the, the week going through our anti-post book so far. Uh, we've, we'll do a wee, can I, I'll put a wee graphic up on the, the social media channels during the week where we've, we'll kind of do some of our, our best ones so far. We did have a we did have some in multiples. We'll start with and in, in my multiple I had Marisur West, who's a non runner. Fasil Vega we both had at six to one is now six to one for the, the Arco in the pockets a non runner. I had Dino Blue at four to five uh, now for the, the Mayor's Chase. So that one I wish I did a single. Yours uh, you had a Rocco and you took a Rocco out and put in uh, Tia Hoopu and Banbridge is in there as well. So you'll get a good one. Banbridge, Tia Hoopu are two really good ones. You went for Tia Hoopu in a single as well. So you've got Tia Hoopu and Banbridge kind of doing well. Dino Blue, obviously, for myself. But into our singles, some really good ones. We'll start with yourself. Uh, Tia Hoopu, obviously, 72 into 3 to 1. Two that jump out straight away. Salvador Siggy, 16 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase, now into fives. And Slade Steel, 14 for the Baring Bingham, now into 72. In terms of your book, Callum, you'd probably say Salvador Ziggy, Slade Steel, where you're your kind of singles, but Tia Hooper and Banbridge are there as well as, as kind of good picks so far. Yeah, and uh, uh, dipping into the handicaps, uh, Highland's still there, thereabouts. You know, Douglas talking non-runner, Beef King non-runner, but you're getting money back in those anyway, so that was kind of bet there, like, deliberate. bit unlucky with Oroko in the pocket in terms injury-wise and targets. Um, Might still see seems positive. There was another positive bulletin saying that he's going to go at the tunnel, so um, yeah, that, that's that's good, and it's... it's um, it allows fact to fail to go to the Brown Advisory without would a shadow you, would of a doubt. Would you look at him for the turners or would the, the injury worry be, be too much for you? I mean, I, I mean, I do have private cover on, on that race anyway, so five to one, I wouldn't really entertain it. But the way it's cutting up, you know, he's, he's definitely within, he's definitely in in the picture, a bit like in the poke in the article. If, if he is supplemented, you know, he's, I, it's, it's cutting up to such a degree that you would actually be mindful of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're definitely good enough to get involved again. It's just whether it's, it's a big unknown. Then market on the day will probably inform you of how he's going to run because you know if if they think they have got him back, he will stay that price. If he doesn't, he will go. He will drift drift out like a barge. On the day, I mean, people will know straight away looking at him in the paddock whether he's going to be up for it or not. To 
to a certain extent coming back from that that injury. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of Daddy Longley has been a bit of a disaster. He could still turn up as Willie Mullins' as ninth string in the, in the Supreme, so you never know. But he, he is crying out for better ground, so I, I, I don't think he's a complete lost cause, but in, 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 in a race like the Rachel Supreme, and he probably is. Carla Conti has a Boodles entry. It's maybe might, that, yeah. might still take her chance of a triumph. Um, I hope she kind of does run. I think there's kind of there's good solidity to her form. I think the new course would suit her quite well. She could she could place it with her chance, but that that's kind of optimistic. And 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 yeah, the rest are kind of the rest are kind of there thereabouts. And we were kind of saying earlier on. I, I think mine's might I might I might get more runners, but I think you make more winners in terms of the way because quite a few years have kind of steamed in really well. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. Well, obviously, like I'm only I'm looking at. The start of the season, obviously, we both had a bit of a, a blow at the start, ran the pocket and then a Rocco, but just Brave Kingdom, obviously, and, and Douglas talking last week's pick. Apart from that, you've you've still got horses that are in with a fair, like, I mean, yeah. Salvador Ziggy hasn't really done anything, but it's just completely kind of drifted, not drifted, but, I mean, you talked about 16 to 1, he's 5 to 1 now. But you're thinking like Salvador's like he hasn't really. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen him since that race in America. So it shows you just get them in early. You know that's the target, and they could just completely drag like yeah. you know, um, the market. A lot of them are still there thereabouts. Uh, a notable thing is that I have not put up many Willie Mullins horses. I noticed that actually, Ma- mainly because. I think it's an absolute death trap, and we don't know where they're going to run. And, and, and been kind of proven a little bit correct in that because he'd be kind of sweating left, right, and saying about you know, backing in and whether they're good or not. Um, and, and yeah, but Zabal like he's done exactly what I thought he would do. I think you know a quick kind of early summer campaign, you know, American National didn't work out, but it did prove that he wanted a trip. Uh, he was just too slow for that race, in, in, in my opinion. And you know, he's done what he's done what he done with his, his better horses. He did it with Galvin. You know, just let's just put them away. Put them away for this, you know. He's got early one fifties in the form in the book, and everyone will forget about him. And and yeah, and it's you've got no Jamie Codd this time, but you know Harry Swan. This this is going to be his year where he can he can really shine in these contests, and you're you're definitely going to get good chances. You can go on it will supply with good chances in Nash Hunt Chase and and the Kim Muir. So um, so yeah, I mean I'm very happy that a lot of people are now caught on. I think he's now. I think he's now borderline a little bit a little bit skinny now, but the race always cuts up. So I mean. And you'd be amazed if he's not in the top three, wouldn't you? It could be like six, seven runners, and he's say like it's number one. Mm-hmm. And and you know you've got Corbett's Cross and Embassy Gardens realistically to beat. So yeah, he, he's also the only one that I've been really sweet on all season. You know, no, and all in all in all assets. You know, in terms of price, target, trainer, ground versatile. And um, you know, I know he's done nothing really, but. While everyone else has been kind of trying to get, oh, one's going to be Willie Mullins' horse, you know, just forget about it, you know, give yourself a few months off and, you know, pick the one that's, <laughs> that's going to go and get a chance and then you can assess it, oh, it's going to be a decent embassy gardens and we might be in trouble. And Elliot does that with his National Hunt Chase horse. Remember with Galvin, he's done it in the past as well. Like a Tiger Roll, I think he did it with. I don't think Tiger Roll had a run between like November and, and March. Cause of causes won it as well. Cause of causes. So, yeah, he's got a good record in kind of keeping them kind of well planned. Nick Rocket for the National Hunt Chase is one I had at twenty two. He's now fives non runner no bet, but he's nine on the the anti post. If you're if you're not taking that insurance, there was an interesting word from Patrick Mullins where he said, "As of now, I'm all, I I will be on Embassy Gardens, but that could change." I'm not completely given up in Nick Rocket, but I, I'm not sure if that was the one he was talking about. I'm not sure. I I would be amazed if he's not an Embassy and Gardens, Arthur, possibly. But you don't know. I mean, it's, I, thought it's maybe, like, I thought maybe meeting of the waters as well. Like they might, if he if he doesn't get into a Kim Muir, would he, he, seems, he seem to be he seem to be the ultimate horse by the way yeah. the way I'm reading things. But I mean, again, I mean, even in this sphere, he's got so many options. And you know, I don't think Nick Rock is qualified yet. Either. I don't. I think no, I, I, I mean Willie Mullins. I think was quite cold in him. Yeah. Uh, I, before I, I don't think he'll turn up personally. Um, but he has options and. He, even 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 the trainer is actually ascertaining, you know, what what, what will go where uh, by the end. So uh, yeah, it's 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 all rather up in the air. 
Uh, right, I've got a couple of, of decent ones. I'm just going to start with the, the terrible ones that I'll apologise for. Uh, Mel Monroe, I don't know what I was thinking there. That was another one, just out the blue, just try to find a Gordon Elliott for temps off. Tiger Bay Queen was getting a lot of hype, and she did get a couple of uh, entries a couple of weeks ago, but then she's not entered. Uh, there's some decent ones in there. Batman Girat could could potentially go to the Boodles. I know he's kind of second favourite. The gamble of mm -hmm. Lark in the morning is ridiculous. Like, 92 for a Boodles? Come on. I think the whole market in the Boodles is ridiculous yeah. at the moment. Yeah. But um but yeah, I can see you know, Willie Mullins doesn't win the ring, at least Joseph O'Brien, you know, does. Mm -hmm. uh, but he seems to be a bit like Banbridge in the way um they seem to be desperate for good ground for him. Um, and they won't they won't risk him if they if they don't go. Yeah, absolutely. There's some good ones in there. I think I'm I'm not ashamed to say that I think the captain of the ship for me is Sub Gino tipped up at yeah, sixteen, now eight to eleven. Definitely. Eight to eleven. I'm very, very happy with that. A couple of good ones in there as well. High class zeros, twelves into fives, uh, five to five, fives into six to four. Seem to be more leaning towards the the brown advisory now than they yeah. were maybe a couple of weeks ago. I'm ecstatic with that. I just hope six to four. I think for the brown advisory, I think is pretty good. I mean, it's a good price. Now. I wouldn't buy it at six to four now. I think there is. I think there's three decent opponents here. But you know, him going there, it might turn like a grey dawning into the tunnels or something like that. So. So so yeah, yeah he, he does like a future gold cup horse. I think he's going the right race and he, he has a massive chance. Um yeah, I would I would definitely i would definitely like that ticket. I mean even like the likes of Firefox has moved quite yeah. well. Um, you know, he, they seem to be the one that people are latching on to in relation to Ballyburn and you know, you're probably hoping that Ballyburn goes bearing Bingham, don't well, you? And I, I want him to go the other way. Yeah. <laughs> so a vested interest there. But but yeah, it's definitely an interesting boot. I mean yeah, I'd, say we, I'd say we both had better books than we have in recent years. Like I would say probably this year, just looking at it in comparison to the past couple of years, awful. they're <laughs> better than they were. Like last really year, a very, a very difficult year all round where yeah. the markets are quite compressed. Where you know you're you're dealing with like in the champion huddle and gold cup are practically out of the equation. Mm -hmm. doors really, and so is the mayor's huddle to to a degree. So um, so yeah, but you've taken a few flyers that I mean, yeah, quite a few haven't haven't quite come off, but the ones that have. You know, sub zeros and, and, and things like that. I mean, are 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 inspired really. So, yeah, I, I think I think your book shades it over mine definitely. I'd say we both get fairly good books going in, but we're going to add one each to them this week, Callum. I'll go with you first. Where is your pick this week? It's twenty to one in the mayor's huddle. It's tell me something, girl. Oh, right, okay. I did not see that coming. Now, obviously, Kenny Alexander. It's you know a drawback with Gallimard so, but you know, tell me something, girl, isn't totally out of the equation. Um, it's good mayor Henry de Bromhead's record in this race is excellent in recent years. Uh, I'm pretty convinced she was going to win two years ago when she was brought down. Um, they were travelling ominously well. They had a chasing campaign that they've absolutely scrapped. It was disastrous. Um, a run subsequently in hurdles haven't been too bad. Uh, the Leperstown race two mile four, um Sailor V and Hispanic Moon were behind her, fifth and sixth. Uh, and she was just turning up ring rusting reappearance, ran pretty well in fourth and behind Jatara and Risk Bell. Uh you've dealt with the form quite quite nicely. Then down and trip against uh Sarak the Brave, who's a one five two horse with his pomp on, on his trip, and he only went down a length and a quarter. Raced quite well, rallied well towards the line, found quite impressively, as if a half-mile autumn trip would, would suit her. Um, that was a mid-140s performance that suggested she was back towards her peak. Um, and, you know, mid-140s, Lossiemouth, Lossiemouth's probably borderline 150. You know, yeah, she's the one to beat, but as a four-year-old going five, there is stamina doubt slightly. Um, it has been a graveyard for favourites, as was, as we've alluded to as well. Um, and Henry de Bromhead's horses just keep improving, improving, improving. You know this horse has got the back class. One of the same connections with Honeysuckle last year, who's the same age, telling me something to get a list here. At the time, there's unfinished business here. Rachel Blackmore will definitely ride, I think. I don't think she'll swap for the Spanish Moon. I think Darrell Keefe has a good partnership anyway. You know, horses like that ilk. Um, and, and yeah, and and, and we got her so now really struggling. She's kind of out the each way picture a little bit. Astro Diamond, I'm not, I'm not a great not a great fan of and I know who's going to ride her so I, I want to take her on personally um, and I think I think she's 
I think she's the second best in the re love envoy. I think it's not quite been herself this season, and she got a cracking ride to get close to to honeysuckle honeysuckle last year. They tell me something the girl isn't quite honeysuckle level, but I think she was going a long way to kind of prove that she might be. She's one of Mayor's normal hurdles. She comes alive. Henry Rudor has yard. They just come alive this time of year. You said some good notable winners last week. Hey, they just he just peaks them so so well. There's no doubts whether where she's going to be going. She won't be going the handicap, you know, where you're kind of thinking maybe an under control would go a handicap route. Um, it's threatening to cut up. Echoes and rain might go champion hurdle if it if it continues to cut up there as well. Um, but we know we kind of know where her ceiling is as well. I think there's a bit of unfinished business Mills hurdle with her, and I don't think 2021's bad because of two runs. She's shaping as if she's coming to form, and, and she does that. She's a proper spring mare. She's not getting any younger, but you know, honeysuckle defied it because she's enough class. And I think she's a, a significant each way player. If the favourite doesn't stay, she could be the one that comes late and pounces as well because she likes that kind of stalking, hold up ride. And I can see her try to track all the way through it, and, and and maybe and maybe pick up the pieces that might play into a front runner. I haven't spotted. I mean, Marie's Rock is in the downgrade, but she does stay. A prominent ride might, might kind of spark her into life a little bit to drag out the stamina stamina test. But um, tell me something, girl. You know she gets the trip, and that would, that would suit her. She does have tactical speed. I think she just needs a bit more luck than she did two years ago. And I think she's shaping into into decent form. If she was showing nothing, then I wouldn't be interested. But she, she is actually showing something. And that run behind Zach, the Brave, was was deeply encouraging um, and it's it's gone under the radar a little bit and I think 20 to 1's acceptable now in, in a race where the main argument against Lossie Mouth was Gala Marceau who's completely blotted her copybook in the same week and mm -hmm. yeah they've gone in for Hispanic Moon um, tell me something girl I think it's a better horse than Hispanic Moon um, I think she should be about I think she'd be priced for Love Envoy is about 12 to 1 14 to 1 bracket I think 20s isn't bad yeah, no, I think it's it's fair enough. I didn't see it coming, but I I, I know you're a fan of the horse, and I, I think it's it's a good each way playing the race. I'm going to go for a horse in the trust a trader plate, and it's got all the makings of a JP McManus pot, and I think a lot of people are cottoning on to it. It's for John Joe O'Neill, and it's Cree Billy, who I mm. think has some excellent form this season. I think they were looking at this horse as potentially over further but I, I think now looking at it he could be a plate horse He's, I thought he was really really good at Exeter and heavy ground and over 2 mile 3 I think that was just a kind of plan to to really get him prepped for, for a race at Cheltenham, good, good form in behind the likes of Jenny's Destiny would have probably given him a race in November if he stayed on his feet, I was quite intrigued with him that day really good form over Puddles as well finished behind the lights of uh, Brambo, that, go back to that race Crambo won last season at uh, Sandown just before Cheltenham where he was really, it looked as if he needed every yard or two and a half that day I think in terms of JP always seems to have won for this race you could get, obviously the he could go Ultima, John Joe's a good record in the Ultima I think they'd wanted Mon Big Genius to be their ultimate horse. But I think Rebelli could be their, their plate horse. I think at nine to one, misses without non runner no bet, by the way. Seven to one's the non runner no bet. I'm very confident that Rebelli is going to be going towards the, the plate. And I think at nine to one, if he's declared if he's going for this race, I don't think he'll be nine to one on the day. Yeah, um, I think nines is Plenty short enough for any horse at a plate at this stage. Um, but yeah, you'd be hoping Tamuris wins the weekend to you boost his form a little bit. Yeah. That horse rather hang its chance away and he was the beneficiary of it. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's got some decent smart form in the book. Um, he's gradually getting experience and yeah, the plate seems a logical race for him, doesn't it? I mean, you'd have to go there. That's probably a long list of I think as well. I think as well, and I might be wrong. Somebody can prove it if I. Somebody can prove me wrong if I am. I think Trust a Trader were offering some sort of bonus for that race at Exeter onto the plate. I might be wrong in that, but somebody can check me. But that could be another thing. The Magnus, the, the Magnus plate had a bit more ring to it than the Trust a Trader plate, and it's, it, it's 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 not the most kind of. Razzle dazzle spots in the world, is it? If there's a bonus on it, then great, go for it. Um, I think JP McMahon's pulled like, quite a few out, I think, for the plate, didn't they? And, and, and it's just so Scottish, I think, and, like hurling and things like that. And that's probably the a positive thing. The shunter will haunt me forever. 
Yeah, that's it's probably a positive sign itself. Um, yeah, I, I think there's it's it's definitely it's a race. It's one of the handicaps that I'm happy to kind of poke fire on a little bit and, and see a bit more of the more of the jigsaw at this stage. But yeah, he's 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 an exposed player. He's not gone up at all for that that run last time, and he does have a bit of Cheltenham experience. Uh, yeah, he's, he's he's obviously over that mishap. Yeah, I, th I think he's he's definitely got scope there. Um, yeah, I think it's a decent pick out. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're we're both kind of happy with our book so far, Callum. We won't have a show next week because I am not here. So I will. We will be back uh, the week before Cheltenham, Callum. So enjoy your your week, Callum. Thank you very much again for coming on, and we'll be back before Cheltenham to do a, a bumper episode. Yeah, we'll do. It really is getting. Getting scarily close now when you're looking at back at the books and you're thinking that they're maybe a bit better than you thought or a bit worse than they thought. And um, but, uh, yeah, regardless of how, how punting's gone and things like that, if you do have an anti post book, and even if it does look bad, it is worth having it as a reference point yeah. because you have had an opinion in the race and you know, you are falling, the falling markets have been in the show from the start. So, I mean, even if it's not going your, going your way quite as much as you think it is, I mean, you have. You know, followed it relentlessly for that. So don't just chuck out that knowledge and and, and start again. Um, so um, yes, stay disciplined and, and spot any opportunities that you can because it can can turn around. Even the worst books can can get money out, and even the best books can can lose out. So I mean, they've got they've all got your run, they've all got to take their chance, and yeah, see what happens. And that's the thing as well. Just before we wrap up, I, I remember remember the year Sam Crow won the the JLT and Champ won the Brown Advisory. I did a treble and the first weekend in October and it was Lorena to win the Arco, Sam Crow to win the Turners and Champ to win the, the Brown Advisory and forgot all about it until I looked at my account the next day mm -hmm. and it was there. And it shows you, keep, do you know what I mean? Don't, even though the prices you're not getting what we got years ago, keep it going because you could find wee gems in there and I've, I've, there's a couple, as you say, private books are important as well. We, we, we put a lot of stuff out but there's a lot of stuff we, we don't and I think I would probably say my private book is just as good this year as it has been in recent years. So I'm I'm fairly, although anti-post markets are getting a lot of bad rap and rightly so, I think you're right. I think keep it going because you can find wee gems in there and they can make all the difference. You can. It's, it's a good challenge, you know, regardless of it. I mean, it is getting harder. And mine's is significantly less than last year. I mean, even privately, it's it's much less. You know, I've, I've kind of ruled out kind of the multis and, and things like that. I've only two... And one of them's actually not bad, but it was like State Man and the Tunnels for one of them. But the other two are T Hoop and Banbridge. So I mean, two of them can imminently win, another one could lose. I mean, it's it's funny. I mean, some of the multiples are can can work like that in in a way. Um, but yeah, there's there's I think there's two ways. There's there's one there's certain horses, certain races that you're actually you know excited about and, and quite confident, and you kind of know that you're onto one. Uh, and you know you've got that kind of positive gut feeling about it throughout, and there's others like 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 your example there that that, that can that can come out of the balloon the stars all of a sudden align. I mean, I had Shishkin, Arkel, Abracadabra, Champion Hurdle, um, Alaho, Ryanair, Manila Indo Gold Cup. Three of the four of them won, and Shishkin was six. As Abracadabra was uh, sixteens. Alho was 16s for his first Ryanair. It's unbelievable. And Manila Indo was also 16s for the Gold Cup. Uh, and, you know, that was kind of, that was almost kind of locked down here. And it, that's, I mean, Man Manila Indo was like woefully out of form beforehand. They go, well, Cheltenham, he comes alive, you know, and he's out within the wash and you think that's got no chance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no chance this one. And all of a sudden, you know, he he, he wins it and, it, and it. And it makes a, it makes a massive, massive difference. So, um, so yeah, it, it can happen. You know, I think everyone's got like over the decades and things like that have probably got one, one magical table to tell, whether it's whether it's planned or not. Yeah, I know there's a I know there's a friend of a mutual friend of both of ours that had Lebeck at like twenty eight, yes. and I'll always say like Lebeck was in nobody's radar that year. So there's there's James there. Keep an eye on your at post books, folks, and we will be back in a couple of weeks on your show. Calm. Thank you very much as always, mate. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, folks, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.